All right, you have a video recording due on Friday, and you have a uh, uh, presentation due on Wednesday. All right, so I'm going to go through this information for this presentation pretty quickly so that we all know what's required of us. Um, with this one, you're choosing your favorite choral piece. Um, or a piece that you particularly like, but it has to be a piece for a choir. And I want to be specific because it has to be, it cannot be something that you um, just like and it's, it's not specifically arranged for a choir. Um, if you can find a copy of music for it that has like the four parts the choir parts on it and you can use that um i'd rather you steer away from like uh songs that you sing at church because those aren't necessarily choral pieces um unless there is a choral arrangement of it that you can find um pop songs unless there's a choral arrangement that you can find then you can use that um it cannot be a song that's that just features that has a choir in the background. That doesn't work. That won't work. Um, trying to think of what else you can use. Anything that we can sing. It could be a song that you sang um, last year or years before that, or a song that you would like to sing in the choir. Um, it just has to be a song for a choir. Now, with the presentation, and everyone should have a uh, a slide layout. I don't know why this. Why mine? You gotta make sure yours, your copies have um, have four, uh, eight slides to them. I don't know why mine keeps giving me only six slides, but it should be eight slides. Let me see if this one has all eight. Okay, yeah, here we go. I use this one. Make a copy entire presentation. All right, so it should have. Let's see if it worked. For whatever reason. Okay, there we go. Good, good, good. All right, so your piece should have. Uh, All right, so you'll give your piece a title, whatever title of your song is, it goes in here. And then you'll need to change the design of that, of the whole presentation. Mine is called Come To Me, My Love. All right, um, I'm gonna change the size of that. I mean, I'm gonna change the font something a little bit different and I'm gonna increase the size okay well that's fine your name the class period and date goes here so put your name in there So then I want to change the layout. So I'm going to slide, I mean background, uh, change theme. Now, Google Slides doesn't give you a lot of different options for themes. You can choose, if you want to, you can do this in PowerPoint. Just open it in PowerPoint and then modify it there and then upload it back into Google um, so that I can access it. Um, but you might, well, you can use that. It gives you a little bit more options with presentation uh, designs, the themes that you can use. Um, I'm just gonna choose that theme. That's what has to be on slide one, the title of your song, your name, date, and class period. That has to be on slide one. Um, and throughout your presentation, make sure you delete the text that's included and fill it in with your own text. Now, title of your song still goes at the top. And 
I'm gonna copy that. <clears throat> what voices sing this particular song? Um, this piece is uh, written for four part harmony. Soprano, alto, tenor, bass. Does it have Debussy with some Debussy? So this one includes divided parts. Um, so I included it has the VC. Are there any instruments or accompaniment? And I want to change my sentence structure, vary my sentence type, so I don't start all of them with this. So I'm gonna write piano is used for accompaniment in this. Um, here you want to change the layout of your slide because I want to include a picture of the the music. I mean, this is why I was saying that you should use one that it there is a choral arrangement of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to slide and I'm going to change the layout. Um, and again, if you do this in PowerPoint, you have a little bit more. There are a little more options, quite a bit of options for layout designs, but since I'm doing Google Slides, I have to use what they give me. So I'm going to choose a uh, title and two columns. So I have information on one side, and on this side I'm going to add a picture. Now I want to be very specific with what I'm doing here. You can search, J.W. Pepper usually has a lot of um, pieces on his website. You can certainly use this website as a point of reference for finding the music or a screenshot images of the pieces um, that you choose, but you can use other websites. This one just happens to have a lot of, of pieces on it. Um, so I'm going to search for, I know it's on here, because um, I just saw it just a while ago. This one is, there it is. So there's an image. I want to copy this image because uh, that's, the, that's the actual cover of it. I know that is. And I'm going to paste the image in, make it a little bit bigger. Oops, maybe a little bit smaller. All right. Well, I may need to change that layout. Uh, I'm going to use that one. So that way I have that image on that side by itself. And I'm going to delete that. All right, so there, that's that slide. That's that slide. Now, notice I went to Pepper to get that slide. So on my last slide with my resources, I will need to list that site, www.jwpepper.com, because I borrowed something from their website. Um, and anything that you use off of the internet, you have to list the resources on that page. Anything you use, any place you get information from, any images that you use, include where you got those images from. Um, otherwise, your work is plagiarized, and then you just get a zero for it. All right, so let me go back. All right, so I did my second slide. That's what was required on the second slide. Now, on my third slide, again, I had to have my title. Wait, did I? Oh, never mind. So let me go ahead and copy that, because I know it goes on every slide. Well, every slide except for the last slide. All right, so let me go back. All right, now here, who is the song by? So I need to include the poll composer's dates. Um, all 
This song is written by Norman Della Hoya. I think I spelled his name right. I think I spelled it right. J O I. Yeah. And his date, you need to include the composer's date. So Norman De La Hoyo is, his dates are I'm gonna just use this, 1913 to 2008. So that's why I need to include 1913 through 2008. Now, if it's someone that is still alive, yeah, I got it right. If it's someone that is still alive, you would just put B and then whatever year they were born. That's only if the person is still alive. If they've already passed, you'll put the year they were born and the year they died. Again, if, they've, if they're still alive, just put B, which means born, and then whatever year they were born in parentheses. Um, a short bio of the composer. Uh, I don't particularly like Wikipedia, but if you want to use it, you can. The only problem with Wikipedia is that anybody can modify it and say this is, this is accurate, and that's not always the case. Um, let me pause this.